Chapter 53 Life just keeps getting more and more fun, growled Charlie Matthias. Benny, Nick screamed, but the hammer moved behind her and wrapped an iron arm around her throat. The other bounty hunters laughed, knowing that a bad night was suddenly about to become more entertaining. If you think getting shot is fun, Benny said, then you're going to die happy. Charlie laughed. Boy, maybe your brother might have pulled off that kind of banter, but it doesn't carry the same pop if your voice cracks while you're talking trash. The gun was heavy, but Benny forced his hand to stay firm. Charlie appeared to be unimpressed. The rain was thinning, and the last of the firecrackers banged and then went silent. Benny licked his lips, tasting mud and cold sweat. If you're going to pull that trigger, pup, do it while you still have some balls. I'll pull it, said Benny, stepping forward in what he hoped was an aggressive move. Charlie merely looked amused. But I want to know something first. Charlie grinned and looked around at the other bounty hunters. Most of them were trying to round up the horses, but a handful had stood to watch the fawn. Now they were pointing guns at Benny, too. Kid wants to have a fireside chat, boys. Ain't that cute? Maybe he wants to know how to grow a set, yelled one man. Maybe he wants to join, suggested Vin Trong. Maybe he wants to cry about what happened to Tom, offered the hammer, who was scuffed and blackened but didn't look much worse for wear. He gave Benny a truly murderous look, and Benny knew that if the hammer got his hands on him, he'd make him pay very dearly for what had just happened. Benny could have taken his shot when Charlie was turned away, but he kept hoping that Lila would show up. One more diversion was all he needed to rescue Nix, but all he heard in the woods behind him was the diminishing splat of raindrops on leaves and the moan of the wind through the trees. Showing no trace of concern that a gun was pointed at him, Charlie turned back to Benny. Sure, kid. You got some burning question you want to ask? Then old Charlie'd be happy to oblige. Charlie's everybody's friend. The bounty hunters all laughed at that. Why do you do this? Benny demanded. I mean, how can you live with yourself after everything you've done? The big bounty hunter chuckled. Grow up, boy. You think I'm evil? Sure. You want to hang that word on me because I use muscle to take what I want. But you don't have a clue about how the world works. It's the same now as it was before first night. Anyone says different is a fool or a liar. He took a step closer, and Benny reflexively backed away. Charlie looked pleased and he bent forward and leered at Benny. You look at me and you see the big bad wolf. You think I'm some kind of monster. Well, there's a lot worse than old Charlie out here in the ruin, and I ain't talking about Zoms. You got no idea what evil is. I'm looking at it. Hell, boy, I ain't evil. I'm just the guy that's in power. I'm a conqueror, like all them great kings and generals in history. You want to call me evil because of Gameland? You think that's the height of evil? Boy, there are people who conquered half the world, slaughtered whole populations, wiped cultures off the face of the planet. And you know what history calls them? Heroes. Kings. Presidents, champions, explorers. You think America was settled by white men because the Indians invited us here? No. We took this land because we were stronger. And that's how every page of human history is written. It's just our nature. We're a predator species, top of the food chain. Survival of the fittest is written in our blood... It's stenciled on every gene of our DNA. The strong take and the strong make. 
and the weak are there only to help them do it. End of story. You're wrong. The gun was getting impossibly heavy. Benny's whole arm trembled. I can see it in your eyes, boy. You know I'm right. You're so wrapped up in wanting to be a hero your own self that you can't admit it. He took another step, and Benny yielded around again. It was that or pull the trigger, and he couldn't make himself do it. Not yet. Charlie said, I know they teach you pups history in school. They teach you about the old world, about the heroes who built this great nation, blah, blah, blah. But do you think any general anywhere ever won a war without taking exactly what he wanted, whenever he wanted? Or without letting his men have what they needed, whenever they needed it? All through history, the winners ran rampant when they conquered a city or a country, and it was one big party. Just as it should be. If a man is going to put his life on the line, then he deserves some benefits. It's only fair. What are you talking about? You're not some general fighting an invading army. You're not freeing anyone. You're not fighting for anything. Charlie's face darkened. Oh, I'm not, am I? Well, learn a little of your own history, then. I was there when we found Mountainside. Me, Charlie Mathias. I helped build that stinking town. I scouted the first trade route through the ruin. I brought the first wagons of supplies from the cities to help reinforce the fence. I was the one who raided the hospital and brought back half a ton of medical supplies. Most of the men who protect the traders and city scavengers now work for me or were trained by me. And I brought more survivors, including a couple hundred whole families out of the ruin to Mountainside. I saved more people than you ever met, my young pup. So don't tell me I haven't been fighting for anything. He took one more step and this time Benny was too flummoxed to step back. Benny! yelled Nix. Don't listen to him. He's just trying to confuse you. She would have said more, but the hammer flexed the massive muscles in his arm, and his biceps choked Nix to silence. Benny licked his lips. Charlie said, Once upon a time, I met a group of travelers in these mountains who were half dead and running from a pack of zombs, a group that included a skinny Japanese kid and his baby brother, and I showed them the path to Mountainside. So, boy, you want to get your facts right before you tell me that I ain't been fighting the good fight. A hundred years from now, when they write the history of First Night and the years that followed— They'll put my name down as the greatest hero of the zombie war. Me, Charlie Mathias. Benny didn't want to believe Charlie, but he knew the big man was telling the truth. At least, the truth as he knew it. Maybe you did all that, Benny said, using his left hand now to support his trembling right. But it still doesn't give you the right to do the other things you're doing. Don't it? Being right is all about living up to a set of laws, and there are no laws out here in the ruin. Even your worm-meat brother told you that much. The laws of places like Mountainside end at the gate, because nobody there has the guts to step past those fences and establish the law outside. Nobody but me. And since I'm the top dog out here, I get to make whatever laws I want. I'm not talking about laws, said Benny through gritted teeth. The moaning of the wind in the forest behind him was louder. Was the storm going to build back up again? I'm talking about right and wrong, Charlie laughed. You're going to stand here with a gun in my face, ready to kill me, and you're going to lecture me on right and wrong? Who appointed you judge, jury, and executioner? 
You pass a burning bush on the way here and get some new commandments? I think the old ones kind of dried up and blew away when the first of the dead rose up and started eating people. Call me crazy, but I think that was a game changer. When dead ain't even dead no more, then as far as I'm concerned, no other previous rules apply. So that means right is whatever I decide it is. No, then he began, but Charlie made his move. He stuck his left hand out to the side, and Benny's reflexes reacted before he could control them, and his eyes flicked toward the movement. With lightning speed, Charlie used his right to slap the pistol out of Benny's hand. With one step, he was chest to chest with Benny, and his face was a mask of naked fury. He grabbed Benny's shirt with one hand and hauled him to his toe tips, and knocked his head to one side with a powerful slap of his hard open palm, and then backhanded him, so that his head whipped all the way to the other side. The shock to Benny's cheek was nothing compared to the double jolt to his neck, and Benny's knees buckled. Benny! Nix cried, but all that escaped the stricture around her throat was a desperate croak. Charlie Pink Eye shoved Benny away in disgust. You're a worthless little piece of crap, kid. You talk big when you're holding a gun, but you don't even have the stones or the smarts to pull the trigger when you have the chance. That's why people like you don't run the world. It's people like me. People who aren't afraid to make the hard choices and take the tough actions, who get things done, and who deserve to say what's what. Power is the only thing that matters, pup and the sad news is that you just don't have enough of it. Kiss my ass, Benny snarled, and he launched himself at Charlie. His training with Tom hadn't lasted long enough for him to learn the subtleties of combat. He didn't know many tricks, wouldn't have qualified for any belt. All he had was his rage. He barreled into Charlie so hard that the big man was actually forced backward two steps. Benny came in low and fast, driving his shoulder into Charlie's thighs, hoping to knock him down. If he could get him down, maybe he could stomp on him, break an ankle or a knee. Or Charlie's face. But Charlie didn't go down. He dug his heels into the mud to stop Benny's rush, and then he clubbed Benny aside with a forearm shot to the side of the head. Benny saw it coming, and ducked enough to miss most of the force but there was still enough power there to drive him to one knee. With a growl of anger, Benny tried to hook a punch into Charlie's crotch, but Charlie turned into it, and Benny's fist collided with the big man's hip bone. Pain exploded in Benny's hand. Nice try, pup, Charlie said. Points for having some stones, more than I thought. Not enough, though. He grabbed Benny by the hair, jerked him to his feet, and then buried an uppercut so hard into Benny's stomach that his whole body was lifted off the ground. His entire abdomen seemed to be folded around Charlie's massive fist, and the impact drove all of the air out of the world. Benny fell, eyes bulging, face purpling, gasping, capable only of making high-pitched squeaks as he fought to take in even a mouthful of air. He heard Nix calling his name, screaming as she fought against the hammer. He heard the laughter of Charlie and the other bounty hunters. He heard his own inhuman squeaks. He heard Charlie say, Digger, Sting, you boys do me a favor and drag his sorry butt into the pen and tie him up. Don't be nice about it. Hammer, Show the girl some manners and then tie her up with the others. The rest of you, go find those other kids and let's get this camp together. This whole thing's been a total cluster f- And something came hurtling out of the dark, and slammed into the back of the man called Digger as he bent to grab Benny. He gurgled out a single low cry and fell face forward onto the ground. Benny stared at the man, at the knife that was buried nearly to the hilt between his shoulder blades.
The handle was black and ribbed, and the inch of blade that showed was equally black and double-edged. Benny felt his brain twist around backward. He knew that knife. Then a scream cut through the air as something massive leaped over the dying man's body and crashed full force into the knot of bounty hunters. The horse wasn't one of the bulky draft horses that had broken free from the camp. It was Apache. And riding the big buckskin was a bloody man, whose clothing hung in rags, whose eyes were dark and wild, and who slashed at the bounty hunters with a glittering sword. Tom.